A warm welcome to Ripley. Uh, the mayor met me outside as we were coming in. I've been here for your July the 4th celebration, which is wonderful. Been here many times with my son that played soccer for Hurricane, and we came over and had different degrees of success playing Ripley. So it's great to be back. Uh, we are here today to talk about the road bond uh, referendum coming up on October 7th, a very important day. Our goal here today is to educate and to inform. The governor will be joining us in a few minutes, and the governor, I, I can tell you that already in Parkersburg, he spent quite a bit of time asking questions. That's what he likes to do. So we're here to explain, and we have a number of folks who uh, were, are going to provide opening statements for us as we move ahead, and then when the governor comes in, we'll go ahead and switch to him pretty quickly. So first off, I'd like to uh, offer uh, Chief of Staff Mike Hall the ability to come up and uh, make a statement for the governor's office here. My goodness, it's good to see you all. A lot of familiar faces since I guess I could take this minute to thank Jackson County for allowing me to serve you for so many years. I did change positions here recently. I see my new Senate placement is here. Governor uh, is very enthusiastic about his uh, road bond proposal. Let me just, from the perspective of someone who worked in the Finance Committee for a few years, tell you a few things. Uh, first of all, this road bond itself uh, was put in place because of an action of the legislature in the last session. You know, for years I've heard nothing about, let, we got to fix the roads, fix the roads. Well, folks, this is your opportunity. For years, I mean, I've heard that on talk radio and everywhere, fix the roads. What this uh, proposal does is the legislature, after years of, uh, of struggling with getting revenue together to do it, actually did it last summer. Those were courageous votes. I'm sure that some of our people will face uh, opposition as a result. But they put in place the money, and just like if you went to a bank to borrow money for a house, what's the banker want to know? He wants to know if you got the ability to pay. If you're going to go to New York and say, hey, we want the whole world out there to loan West Virginia $1.6 billion, then what's the people going to ask? Well, very simply, does West Virginia have the money to pay? Yes, it's already in place. Nobody's going to loan you any money if you tell them, hey, we, uh, I want a loan, where's the money come from? Oh, I'll get a job sometime. No, you do. so this thing about no, new taxes in the future to pay it off, common sense tells you nobody's loan you the money if that was the case. So that's an objection that we've heard. So what we've got here, and you're going to hear in greater detail about this, but I'm just dealing with the number one, the number one objection. Are our taxes going to go up? No. The taxes have already been put in place by some pretty courageous votes on the part of the legislature. That was an answer to the public's demand, fix our roads. And I talked to a man not too long ago, and he said, hey, I got my road paid. He said, how old are you? He said, I'm 68. I said, it'll be 33 years before you get it done again if, uh, <laughs> if we don't do something. So you're going to be dead before you see that again. Enjoy it now. Well, if, if you pass the road bond, that man won't die before he sees his road <laughs> paid the next time. Uh, people are saying, well, you know, how are we going to know? I had somebody, I was in Mason County this morning eating breakfast right there at one of those McDonald's bunches, and they wanted to know, well, how, talking about a road that got built, they didn't like it. And I said, look, I can't talk about the past, but I can talk about the future. This man right here is part of the future. You look at that map right there, they have spent a lot of time putting together a plan that's common sense, that's objective, that's based upon uh, a good science and, and good reasonable economic thinking and so the whole state participates in this and those two maps kind of show you that they're out there for you so the people will say well I don't trust the highway department well I can tell you you can trust this man he's a good man I've known him for a long time he's Putnam County by the way and they put together a good plan so don't listen to that you know people tell those stories this is going to be done right and done very thoroughly it's a it's a type of plan that we need to have happen for the people of Jackson County and the whole state. And then I would just add further, and I don't want to confuse somebody, uh, in the last meeting there was some confusion, so I want to be clear about something. All this money that was voted for goes to the highway fund. None of it's going for education or tourism or anything like that. It's all going to the highway fund to drive this bond. That's by constitution. Don't anybody tell you that all this money, they're going to take it and spend it somewhere else. But what is going to happen is if this money is actually uh, bonded out, as this proposal is, 
It's going to create all sorts of economic activity that will generate revenue for our budget, which I'm familiar with as being finance chairman for the last three years and being a legislature a long time. It will spend money over to education and tourism and, and public safety and all those things. So that it really will help us. If, you, if you're inclined to say, well, I'm not sure it's going to help. It helps everybody. It helps the city, everybody else, because we get the spin off of the economic activity. All this money goes to highways, but the growth of our economy will help us with education and this city and everything else. So those are preliminary remarks I wanted to make to you just to deal with the two or three things I've heard and, and encourage you to vote for this and get your friends to vote for it. This is an opportunity for our state to, to make a difference. It'll jumpstart our economy. Thank you. Uh, you're going to hear from some others. I guess I'll turn it back over to you and you can introduce the next speaker. Thanks, Chief Hall. I'm not going to say very much about it because a lot of folks are going to talk, but I do want you to understand that the total Path to per, uh, Roads to Prosperity program is $2.6 billion. That will kickstart the economy, create thousands of jobs, and create a ripple effect where there are additional money that can flow in and actually be used for roads and other things. We've already got a lot of stuff going. Now, I want to tell you that the map over here with the 600 projects on it is representing the, the $2.6 billion. But real important, and we're here today to talk about the general obligation bond referendum on October 7th. What is really, really important is $1.6 billion of that pays for those very expensive projects next to President of the Senate, Mitch Carmichael, standing right there. Those are very expensive projects that we have to get to and work on, things like the wheeling bridges, things like the I-64 Nitro St. Albans Bridge in the Charleston area. There's a lot of those spread around. There's about 40 of them spread around the state. Very expensive projects. We have to do those. Now, the real important point is that green slice of the pie is what will be voted on on October the 7th. That's $1.6 billion out of the $2.6 billion. It's, it's the lion's share of the work. So it's real important you all understand that. Make this like your family circumstance. You're wanting to start a family. So starting the family is reviving our state and actually having our state grow again. You just got a pay raise at work. That pay raise is the taxes that the, uh, and fees that the legislature passed. Now the final step here for buying our new home is to go get a mortgage. That's simply what we're doing is getting our mortgage approved by the public on October 7th. The funds are already in place. So again, there will be ample opportunity after this to talk about the program in detail, but I just think it's very important that you all understand how important that green slice is and how big it is compared to the total program, and that's what is being voted on, the ability to actually get the approval for bonding. The funds are already in place. Our next speaker I'm going to call on is Mr. Chris Hamilton with the Business and Industry Council, and I welcome you to, uh, the, to the stand here, and please uh, make some remarks. Thank you, Tom. Hey, good afternoon. What a pleasure it is to be here. I typically come up here about once a year, talk to you about the coal industry and the energy and extractive in industries. And uh, it's always good to be here. Uh, uh, and I tell you, I want to thank you also for sending Mitch Carmichael and Mike Hall as your Senate representatives to Charleston, as you have done over the years. And Steve Westfall and the whole House delegation. And these guys get it done. They roll up their sleeves. Uh, you know, their lights are the first to come on in the morning, the last go out at night, and uh, it, it's all about how to move West Virginia forward. And that's what this issue is about. I'm here today with the, under the hat of uh, the West Virginia Business and Industry Council. We represent uh, all the business trade associations in the state. It's a pretty big organization. It's the retailers, it's the car dealers, it's the coal association, it's the manufacturers, contractors, and that list goes a medical, uh, medical uh, community, and the list goes on and on and on. We span some 26 business categories and represent uh, about 400,000 workers here within the state. And I've heard, the, I've heard the comparisons or the examples about building a house and starting a family. From our perspective, this is all about improving our infrastructure and creating jobs. Those are two core issues of our organization. And whether you talk to a new business looking to come in here, uh, an existing business wanting to expand, when you talk to all the people with the business and visitors bureaus and our Department of Commerce, our infrastructure, our road conditions, whether you can get to point A to point B, 
uh, within a, uh, and make an easy drive and not tear up your car. Those are just really prime considerations of any existing business expanding here or new businesses coming in. Plus, they're pretty important to all of us who hold that almost as high as our education and other, and other things that we consider and, and look for. Uh, we have one of the worst, you know, if anything, we lead the, the, the nation in, it's with our terrible workforce participation rate. And I think we can all relate to the undesirable consequences of when people are unemployed. We see it every day, we, we're all, all impacted by it. This provision, which won't cost an additional penny, no fees, no increased taxes, has the potential to create almost 50,000 new jobs around this state. That's almost a, my simple way of, of, uh, of uh, doing math, that's almost 1,000 new jobs per county. That's unbelievable. And while you may question whether that's 50 or only 48,000, it's a large amount of new jobs, new high paying construction jobs. Our association is just, we're, we're totally involved. We, uh, we are all in, we fully embrace this issue. Uh, we absolutely embrace uh, the, the governor's uh, efforts to get this passed. We urge everybody to get out and vote for it. We don't see a downside. We do not see a downside. All the revenue measures are already in place and we have an opportunity to fix our roads, fix our infrastructure, bridges, and create all these high paying jobs which we'll all benefit from on a statewide basis. So I'm honored to be here, honored to share the podium with, with the governor and, and others and uh, really appreciate being in Ripley. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Next up, uh, Mr. Dale Lee, representing the West Virginia Educators Association. Thank you. I am Dale Lee. I'm the president of the West Virginia Education Association, the state's largest teacher organization. And it is a pleasure to be here in, in Ripley to, to address you today. We come from a little different angle on this roads bond because I spent the first uh, month of school traveling around the state, visiting our schools and, and seeing the conditions that, that our kids had to get to school in. And this is a safety issue for our students. You know, I, I've saw roads where they've had uh, mudslides and, and pavement slides where buses can't get to the kids right now. I've seen roads where the, the potholes are so bad that the bus really destroys it, it, itself every time it goes over. I've even seen a highway where the the bus stopped and had to have the kids walk across a, a bridge. Then the bus goes across the bridge and the kids get back on the bus. Folks, that's just sad. That is wrong for us in West Virginia. That is wrong for our students in West Virginia. And not only our students, but our, our staff, our educators, our teachers and service professionals are having to drive these same roads and the wear and tear on their vehicles to, to get to school. This is one of the most important votes that we'll take in West Virginia because it's an opportunity to provide safety for our children. More importantly, or not more importantly, but equally, it's an opportunity to bring our children back to West Virginia because when you're providing jobs, then we're getting our kids back to West Virginia. There's very few counties that I've been in so far that haven't had a loss of enrollment and haven't had to reduce the num number of teachers that they've had. Well, wouldn't it be great to think that in the next couple years, we had to worry about hiring more teachers instead of laying teachers off? Wouldn't it be great to, to think that there was a pot of money that, that we could come up with because of this roads, uh, the revenue that's coming in and business is coming in, wouldn't it be great to think that the 718 vacancies we had last year in the state of West Virginia will go down to zero because we're paying educators a, a, a competitive salary and more importantly, we're doing the things right for our kids. 
Wouldn't it be great to know that there was never a question about Promise Scholarship, whether it was going to be funded again or fully? You can't do that without bringing jobs to West Virginia, and you can't bring jobs to West Virginia if we don't have roads, if we don't have access. I'm a Southern West Virginia boy. I grew up in Wyoming County, and I travel the same roads there now that I traveled when I was a kid. It took 27 years, 27 years to finish the road between Mann and Logan. We can't afford to go 27 more years to get another part of the road fixed. This is why we need to do this now. It is an honor to stand and, and unite with business and industry and labor and the legislature and the governor to promote this roads bomb because this is vital for our kids. Thank you so much. This morning in Parkersburg, uh, Steve Roberts with the Chamber of Commerce was here. I'm not sure that he's been able to join us. I have not seen Steve yet. So, okay, uh, we will go on to our next speaker then. Very important part of the, the partnership that we have for building roads in West Virginia are working with our West Virginia consultants and our West Virginia contractors. A uh, key part of how we deliver things, this uh, partnership between the private side and the public side. Michael Haidt is here with the West Virginia Consultants, and Mike Clouser is here with the West Virginia Contractors. So representing that group, I'm going to ask Mike Clouser to come up and make some remarks. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I'm Mike Clouser with the Contractors Association of West Virginia. We represent about 425 members throughout the state who are building West Virginia and repairing our highways and fixing our bridges and our schools and at hospitals. and and the secretary talks about the future and what the future of this bond issue will do. But I will tell you that Tom and his, his dedicated staff are creating the future today. Tuesday, uh, at the West Virginia Department of Highways letting of projects, uh, they advertised and took bids on about $265 million worth of repair and reconstruction projects. And Tom, I think you told me that's the greatest letting in the history of West Virginia. Greatest and, and, you know, what a great start to what we're talking about today because we can continue repairing our roads, we can continue expanding our highway system as what we've talked about and you've heard from previous speakers is it is jobs and it is quality of life. You know, our association represents, as I said, about 425 uh, member firms, uh, they employ about 20,000 West Virginians. Uh, but a lot of our West Virginia workers, uh, and I see Chuck back here, you know, a lot of his members uh, are working in Ohio and Virginia and Maryland because that's where our contractors are going because of the lack of work that we have had uh, to repair our roads and bridges in West Virginia. And we see this not only a way to create new jobs within the state of West Virginia, we see it as a way to bring those people home that have had to go elsewhere to find opportunities. And if they have moved to those states and we give them an opportunity to come back, hopefully we are bringing their children back to have the future generation and future workforce in the state of West Virginia. And as we talked about before, you know, those jobs ripple throughout the economy. Uh, our members they buy cars, uh, they go to Kroger's, they, they travel to uh, tourism places throughout the state. Uh, they frequent the doctors and, uh, and the dentists in their local areas. So we see an immediate infusion of, of engineering jobs and construction jobs, but we see this rippling throughout the entire state of West Virginia to create an economy that will put, propel the state forward. Um, as, as, you know, as we discussed uh, also uh, in Parkersburg, Tom, uh, you know, a bad roads affect all of us, if, if, if a trucking company has to go 25 miles out of its way uh, to deliver um, milk or deliver goods, that is, that's a cost that's added on to that product and added on to all of us here. Um, if you talk to any economic development person, they say one of the number one aspects uh, for site development is a safe and modern transportation facility and a uh, transportation system. And if you look at what's transpiring in, in the Eastern Panhandle with Procter & Gamble, uh, with uh, um, 
uh, here in Jackson and, and Wood County with the automotive industry. Uh, hopefully we're talking about future cracker plants, oil and gas development in the state. Uh, all of that would not be possible if we didn't have the modern transportation system to move those products, to move those goods, to move those services. So we see uh, the roads for jobs and prosperity as a way to create immediate good paying jobs, but we see it as a, as a way to expand and create jobs throughout the entire economy. And that's, that's why we are here today, Tom. Uh, again, we appreciate, you know, uh, uh, when you look at Steve Westfall and what he did on, uh, with the highway bill and, and Delegate Atkinson and, and their efforts, uh, certainly led by Senator Carmichael uh, in the Senate. Um, we've had great leadership that have a vi true vision for West Virginia and we see this as a great opportunity to propel this state forward. And, and for that, uh, we, are, we are pleased and honored to be here today. And Tom, sure wish you well with all your efforts going forward. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Mike. Our next speaker, and I understand the governor is on his way, he'll be here very shortly, uh, is the president of our Senate, uh, Mr. Mitch Carmichael. So please come forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. It's great, and for the visitors that are here, uh, not in Ripley, uh, or not from Jackson County, welcome to the center of the universe, right? <laughs> this, is, uh, <laughs> this is where it all happens, and so we're so glad to uh, host you here today. Just short notice, and look at this wonderful turnout. I'll be very brief because the message is very simple. It is a simplest vote. We've talked about how important it is. This is a simple vote also. Do you want better roads, more jobs, for no new taxes? How much easier could you get? So for those who are here making up, I appreciate everyone being here and, and coming to this event to learn more about this issue. But it's really that basic and that simple. The legislature has already put in place the funding mechanisms to pay for these bonds, to build these roads, and to create these jobs. All you have to do is say yes say yes to building these roads. And uh, Senator Hall, Chief of Staff Hall, talked about it earlier where he said, do you really want to go to a bank, borrow the money, commit to making the payments for 25 years, and then say to the bank, no thanks, I'm not going to live in the house, I'll continue to make the payments? That's what you would be doing with a no vote. It really is that simple. And so we have this wonderful opportunity to create the jobs, the growth, and the prosperity in West Virginia with a yes vote on October 7th. Early voting begins shortly, and uh, it's time for West Virginia to do this. We've all complained about the conditions of our roads and our infrastructure projects. Now is the time. We are the generation that is going to fix this problem, and a t modern economy in the 21st century deserves a modern transportation and infrastructure system. Those are the reasons to vote for this. Uh, I really appreciate your uh, willingness to come here to learn more about this, your leadership on this issue, all those that have uh, contributed their comments. Uh, I, know, I, I think I see the governor out here. He's ready to talk. So uh, we've timed this perfect. <laughs> and that's the way the rollout of the roads projects is going to work also. So again, thank you. And uh, let's all get out, tell our uh, churches, our family, our organizations that we're in to help put West Virginia on the road to prosperity with a yes vote on this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I will say with engineering-like precision, the governor has arrived. Uh, uh, the, the man who came up with this idea, the man who fleshed it out, the man who pushed it across the finish line is Governor Justice. As a transportation professional, I can tell you I find it very gratifying to know that he has put transportation right at the centerpiece of this. Uh, so it's very important for us to have a chance for the governor to tell you more about this. I know he also will be happy to answer questions afterwards. And, Again, it's just such a key part of this educational program that we're putting together. So I welcome Governor Justice, our 36th governor. Okay, let's do it. Okay. You guys are my escorts. Y'all want to talk about anything? <laughs> All right, y'all go, okay? Thank y'all. Please sit. Tom, thank you. Mr. Secretary, and thank you all of you wonderful speakers. Where did Mitch leave to <laughs> go to? 
I thought, my gosh, well, I'm going to just sit here and talk with you, okay? Because it's a little easier on me, and I think it's more personable to you guys. First of all, you've heard a lot of people speak, and I'm sure that they've expounded on the road bond. And uh, I want to address your concerns. You know, I would tell you just this, that, uh, and I hate to keep going over the same thing, but, it, but, but we surely have to in different communities. And Ripley is a wonderful, wonderful community. I've had the opportunity to come here and coach lots and lots and lots of basketball games. I can remember one night, right in the gymnasium not far from here, we had to leave. And we were ahead, I think, by about six points. And all of a sudden, the lead just started evaporating and everything. And we, had to, we still had to lead. And there was three seconds to go in the game. And we had the ball. And one of our kids, this was a girls' team, one of our kids jumps out of bounds, and I'm saying, just stand there, stand there, stand there. And she just tossed it straight to one of the Ripley players, and they just put it in. <laughs> that was the end of the game. And I was sitting there thinking, that didn't feel very good. <laughs> you know, but uh, anyway, what a wonderful kid. I mean, her name's Corey Lynch, and she's, she's done a lot of goodness since then, a lot of great, and she's on her way. But... Uh, this is our chance to be on our way. You know, these beautiful young ladies escorted me in. That was really special. But uh, this is our chance. You know, uh, the passing of this Rose Bond referendum will launch West Virginia. You know, I came to this idea, and I've said this over and over, but it's just the truth. In my world, I give credit to the good Lord for all the good ideas, I give credit for all, but all the good ideas, and I'll try to take credit for the bad ones. And this is a humdinger. This is a terrific idea. So it's way beyond me to come up with this kind of idea. But, you know, I came up with this way back in the primary, and I would tell our people about it, and they, and they would say, well, you better just keep that to yourself for now. Because basically what you had to do in order to pull it off, is you had to come up with some kind of funding vehicle in order to pay for the bonds. Well, so we stayed away from it as far as expounding on it in, in the primary and the general election. But I knew what we had to do because at the end of the day, it's just as simple as this. When I came into being, we had a $500 million hole in the bucket. Now, we had drained rainy day to the point in time where our bonds are being deregulated or derated. Now just think about it. Where are you going to turn? What are you going to do? I mean, tell me. What are you going to do? Now you talk about an 18-carat dog's mess. Now that's what we're in. An 18-carat dog's mess. Now, so at the end of the day, if you don't really have anywhere to turn, you can say, well, let's create an environment that will bring people to the state of West Virginia. But what's that going to do tomorrow? Do you think that's going to happen tomorrow? Well, of course it's not. You have to have immediate jobs. That's all there is to it, immediate jobs. Well, how are you going to do that? The only way and this came to me ever so clear, the only ways are roads. Now we can say anything we want to say, but that's the only way in West Virginia that I know of today that we can create immediate jobs. Now, so I, I took off working on this whole concept, and then the long and the short of it is the legislature, with the guidance of this great man, and wherever Mike Hall is, I don't know where Mike, maybe he ran off, but uh, your ex-senator and your president of the Senate right here and their friends. And Mike now is my chief of staff, and you should be really proud of him, but you should be extra special proud of Mitch. He does you a great job, and he's a good man, and he understands, and he truly wants greatness for West Virginia. Now, there may be people here that can't stand him, and you're wrong. You're just plain wrong, you know. 
He'll agree with me on that. But I know it, and I know what we went through. Remember, I was a Democrat governor, and I sat with him over and over and over and working on stuff. Well, it would have been easy for him to just said, well, I'm not doing that because I don't like you because you're a Democrat, blah, 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 blah. and I could have said the same thing back to him. But we really worked, and we worked a lot of things out together. You see, if you've got something stru stuck in your throat or whatever from the standpoint of me switching parties or whatever like that, let me explain just this to you. All I can do is tell the truth. And when it got, got right to crunch time, I had the Senate and enough Republican House members with me in order to pass something that would have really helped a lot of West Virginians. I needed the Democrats. I needed my party at the point in time that it was crunch time. And really, they dove in the ditch, and they dove in the ditch pri primarily because of one thing, and that is there was a component of tax reform which was nothing. It was helping their own constituents beyond belief. It was nothing. It was so watered down, it was unbelievable, but they didn't like it because it was a Republican idea. You see? We let politics get in the way of really, really helping a lot of people. I can't continue to do that. I'm not going to continue to do that. Now, I've been a Republican, I've been a Democrat, I've been a Republican, I've been a Democrat, and now I'm a Republican, and I am proud of it because I truly think that's what it's going to take for us to really get stuff done in our state. And believe me, B, I don't want any part of riding in the parade or doing or showing up at the football game and being the governor and having everybody run up and pat me on the back. I don't want to do that. You know, all I want to do is get something done because these two beautiful young ladies, they deserve something other than being dead last. They're absolutely beautiful beyond belief, and I'm sure they're as smart as they can possibly be, and one of them's a salesperson, you, already right off the get-go. And but but the other flip side of it is just this is think about it. Before you can blink an eye, you'll be looking for a job and you'll be old enough to make decisions about your life, about what to do. You may have even fallen in love with some old boy. <laughs> but nevertheless if there's not opportunity in this beautiful place that you're in right now, you'll make the decision that many people have made, and that is I've got to go somewhere else to another state to have a job or an opportunity or seek your opportunity in life. When are we going to quit that? I mean, our families are fragmented. We're dead last and everything coming or going. When are we going to quit this nonsense? I mean, that's all there is to it. We have the most beautiful state in the land. We're positioned within a rock's throw of two-thirds of the population of the whole country. We have natural resources that are unreal. What state has oil and gas and coal and timber and water? My gracious goodness alive, we've been blessed beyond belief. We have four of the greatest seasons on the planet. We have the greatest people. We have the safest schools, we have the best teachers, and yet we're throwing dead last? Well, listen, to my soul above, you're not going to throw dead last with me, and I don't think you're going to throw dead last with this man, and we're going to do something about it. That's all there is to it, with your help. Now, I've been way down the trail, but the first step is this. There can't be anybody here that's goofy enough not to vote, vote for this road bond. That's all there is to it. There can't possibly be a human being in this world that's goofy enough to not vote for it. The only reason you could not vote for it is you've been scared about something that's not true, like your taxes are going to go up. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And I'll tell you why it's crazy. Because people got to buy the bonds. And there's no way they're going to buy the bond if they're not guaranteed the money. There's no way. So the money to, has to already be set aside. 
And if the money's already set aside, how's your taxes going to go up? It's crazy. It's crazy. But yet there's people out there that are trying to convince you of that, which is smoke and mirrors. It's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. Now, if the funding is already there, and it is, it's already there, what happens if it doesn't pass? You know what's going to happen? All your money, government's going to pee it away, and you're not going to get your roads fixed, and you're going to lose all your money. That's what's going to happen. Now, at the end of the day, it's just as simple as that. And so I can't tell you enough that to tell you that all throughout life, if you were to bring, are these your beautiful daughters? Okay. Where did you come from? <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. But, okay. Well, we love to have you here, okay? Uh, let me tell you this. You know, I said we love to have you here. My daughter, Jill, was, was being recruited, well, not being, she had signed a basketball scholarship with Clemson University. And I was down there. And I was standing, and they, the, only the athletes, only the athletes were, were there at a special orientation just for the athletes. There was three women's basketball players, a couple of tennis players, 30 or so football players, and, you know, couple, you know, half a dozen men's basketball players, and they were all there. And it was 110 degrees. It was so hot, it was unbelievable. And I was standing there, and just the athletes were standing around, and I had a pair of shorts on and just a golf shirt, and I was just sweating like crazy and everything. And these two giant football players, one black guy and one white guy, they were standing right beside me. And I turned and looked right at them and never batted an eye. And I said, and this was in 2000, 2003. So I was still pretty old in 2003. <laughs> but I turned and looked right at them and I said, you know, I started a little late, but I'm going to be with you all this fall. And I never smiled, I never did anything. I just acted like I was one of the players that had been recruited. And absolutely, they looked at me, ne I never smiled, never nothing. And they looked at me, looked all the way up, <laughs> all the way down me. And finally, one of them, both of them from South, um, both of them from South Georgia, so they both talk real Southern. And so finally, one of them looked at me, he was a great big white guy, and he looked at me and he said, We'd be glad to have you. <laughs> so I'll be glad to have you. <laughs> you know. But anyway, forgive me for all that, but, uh, but ask me anything you choose to ask, please. And you can ask me anything. And I'll answer it as best I can. Please don't. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say, I'm, I'm the uh, clerk, county clerk here in Jackson right. County. And I appreciate you coming to our community. Right. I was at the clerk's convention Monday when you spoke there. Right. And after listening to you, I have to say that I left with a little bit of a different attitude about this whole thing than I've had previously. Okay. You make a very, very compelling argument for this, and I can see where it's going to benefit our state. So I have, I have one question. Who will we be indebted to? Do you have any idea? I mean, well, well I, I I got, I've got to have maybe a little bit of help. Maybe Tom can help. But the, when the bonds are sold, maybe Mitch can help. When the bonds are sold, I don't know who they're actually sold to or through. But none of us will know. We're, we're bought on the open market. The bonds are... Uh, you, yeah, anybody. Excuse, yeah, anybody can buy the bonds. You can buy but they're brokered in pieces. So that no, what may be comforting to you to know that nobody owns one particular segment of these bonds. Okay. They're distributed, everybody owns shares. Okay. So you can buy a share in this uh, okay. financial mechanism. Okay. Really. I mean, and, and, and here's, here's the other flip side. Yeah. If, if, if people buy the bonds, and you correct me if I'm wrong, if people buy the bonds, they give us the money. That's the end of it with us. You know, we got the money, you know, and everything. Now, if we, if we would happen to not have enough money or whatever to pay them, they lose money, not us, you know. So it's not like there's somebody out there that we owe a bunch of money to and they can come and they can own West Virginia. You know, that can't happen. That can't happen.
Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. Um, on, on the bonds, the bonds are actually traded after they're sold, so you really yeah. never know who the original buyer is. And, and, and as the value of, of the bond gets higher, the state's rating gets higher. Go one question on that game in Ripley. Why don't you call a timeout? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I never said I was a very smart coach, <laughs> you know. But uh, I really didn't really expect it to tell you the truth. I mean, I mean, Ripley had just scored to pull it within one point, and our kid. I mean, I'm just watching. Our kid just jumps out of bounds. I'm saying, stay there, and they just, and it, literally there was not even one of our players down there. They just tossed the ball right to this Ripley kid. And I mean, it was like a handoff. It was like a, a three-foot handoff. And I, I, thought, I thought our kid threw it and maybe had a bet on the game or something. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I asked my assistant coach about that last night. And I said, you know, what That's really a, a, a good statement and everything, and and we're we're after that, you know. And you'll see TV ads and direct mail, and you'll see lots of stuff happening in, in you know immediately. But uh, we got a little bit behind the ball, you know, and everything with that. And 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 I I, I guess I've got to take a little bit of credit for that because let me tell you, that, and this is really wild, but uh, I've never been sick before. You know, and I got this viral infection. I thought, well, that's nothing and everything. And uh, they thought I got it from a tick bite or a mosquito bite, of all things. And, and they couldn't really figure out exactly what it was, but it just knocked a fire out of me. I mean, that's just all there is to it. So we got a little bit behind, but uh, I'm rolling now. I was speaking with someone I'm sure most of these people know, Rusty Roten, who is a District 3 engineer on a matter here recently, and I called him actually for a personal matter. I called him to find out why they paved half of my road and didn't pave the other half. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, he kind of explained it to me. He said, now here's the thing, Commissioner. He said, if we can get this road bottom that we passed, we might get the rest of that. And he said, I may not retire. But he said, if we don't get it passed, I'm gonna retire. So we've got two reasons there to get this thing passed, get my road paid, and so Rusty won't retire. It seems to me like he's putting some leverage in this deal. <laughs> uh, yes, sir.
Uh, if we participate 50-50, we could have twice as many roads. If it's 90-10, like the interstate, we could have nine-tenths of many roads. I'd like to get as many, as much roads, as many roads as we can for uh, this issue. But would you comment on that, please? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll comment on a bunch of it, and then I want to, I want to let Tom, uh, Tom Smith, you know, balanced out, but, uh, but just think about this just for a second. First of all, I'm, you know, one of, one of the factors, it wasn't the factor by any stretch of imagination, one of the factors that, I, you know, I surely considered in this switch deal is my closeness to the Trump family, and, and it's for real, and, you know, I, I know them, I know them really well. You've seen they've been to West Virginia up teen times in the last two or three months, they're coming to West Virginia because they care and they want to do something. And they're coming to West Virginia because I'm their friend. That's why they're coming. Now you can not like them, and that's fine and dandy, but we want them to do something for West Virginia. Now, their infrastructure program will fall in behind tax reform, health care, and then that will fall in. And if it falls in, it will be a program that's probably going to be a year from today plus. What we need to bank on is just this. We will have, and I'll let Tom Smith explain that, we will have the extraordinary amounts to be able to, to match dollars and bring in additional Fed dollars. But what I'm very, very, very hopeful of is just this, and you can just see it. You can see it in this administration. This administration, they're either going to do this natural gas manufacturing hub that will be enormous for West Virginia. They could do a coal thing that would really be helpful to West Virginia. They could do a furniture manufacturing thing with our hardwoods things that would be really helpful for West Virginia. They could do real additional dollars for infrastructure in West Virginia in 18 or thereafter. Now, all those things are real possibilities that they can do, and they will do something. I, don't, I can't tell you what they're going to do, but they're going to do significant things for West Virginia. Now, Tom Smith can explain how we're not going to run out of money and not be able to, uh, you know, that we're, not going, uh, that we're going to have additional bonding capabilities, but what my hopes are going to be is just this. We pass our referendum. We do all these road projects, and we're working like crazy, and we're bringing in revenue to West Virginia. I mean, can you just imagine? I mean, let's just think. Just think. What are the payroll taxes on 48,000 new jobs? Well, they're $200 million. What if they spend that money in West Virginia? It's another $200 million. What if they pay income tax on that? It's, it's money beyond money, beyond money, beyond money. And all that money is going into education and veterans and Medicaid and all that kind of stuff that we need desperately in this state. And the whole time we're getting our roads fixed. And the whole time tourism's coming, manufacturing's coming. Our standard of life, which is the most important thing of all, if you guys are thinking about coming to West Virginia and your company is thinking, the first thing you're going to look at is the schools. And the next thing you're going to look at is probably the roads. The standard of life to come to West Virginia is really important to be able to attract people here. Now, as far as having money and not running out of money, if that bogey comes, and I don't think, it's, I don't think it'll come in that manner, that it'll come that says, well, we'll give your state, you know, $50 million if you can match $50 million. I really believe it's going to come from the Trump administration when they do this trillion dollar, trillion dollar, you know, infrastructure program. It's going to come in a lump sum of big money. Now, what my wish is, is this, is we start our program here with $2.4 billion. And they see us willing to help ourselves. They see us really doing something in West Virginia. And then, as it starts to run out, in comes their program, and we just keep right on going. You see, it's going to take about $8 billion 
to complete everything in West Virginia. Now, we got 2.4 going on here, and we got all kinds of money piling back into fixing the existing roads that are tore all to pieces. Okay? So we've got 2.4 plus all kinds of money that we're putting back into existing roads. But that's as far as we can go right now. But if the Trump administration comes right back in with an infrastructure program and says they come back in and they put $3 billion more in it, Maybe they put $3 billion and you can match some form of it. Then we're on our way. We just keep doing what we're doing. We just keep it going. Now, you go. There's not a lot to add over what the governor said. Typically what happens with programs like this is it's something like a 4 to 1 ratio, 4 federal dollars to every state, $1. And so what the governor has instructed us to do is to be very aggressive as we move these projects out, and that's what we're doing. We're planning... Uh, to aggressively put projects out on the street over the next year, two years. But we also do planning, scenario planning for what would we do and if those dollars showed up next year, if they showed up two years out. So I feel, Governor, that we've got a good plan, but we're not waiting. We're going to go ahead and get stuff moving as quick as we can today. Do we have plans for the high these projects? Oh, oh gosh. gosh. These, th sir, remember what I said about immediate jobs? What I'm talking about is projects that have already been permitted, engineered, all the stuff's done. Everything's done. All we've got to do is let the job, bid the job. That's what I'm talking about, and that's what you're looking at here all over the place. These jobs, the engineering's done, the permitting's done, everything is done, and everything is still going on. These jobs, I mean, you can't. You can't, because you're correct. You know, if we had, if we had a, a job that we were going to put in motion, it would take years to get to engineering, the permitting, all the stuff done. And so you'd be years before you had those jobs. But this is not that way, is it, Tom? Thank you so much. I'll give you the, the example that the things we've really put out on the street have been a lot of resurfacing. We just had the biggest history, the biggest landing in state. Now listen, listen to this. This, this, this is, is really, really important. important. He, I'm going to say because it's really important. We just, we just let, we just put out to bid, is, is that correct? Yes, sir, about 265 the biggest, the biggest amount of road work in, our, in the history of the state. Just did it. Just did it. And when this bond passes, that's going to be just, that's going to be this big compared to this big of what's going to happen. We just bid the biggest in the history of the state. And when that big green mama there passes, we're going to bid this big. The, the landing on Tuesday was bigger than the entire Obama tenure in 2009. And so we're going to see immediate results from that, immediate work out here. Over the last 10 years, we've rebuilt about seven miles of interstate. There's a point where you can't just patch it up and resurface it. Next year, we have 60 miles of interstate ready to go to be completely reconstructed. The landing on Tuesday, Governor, I'm proud to tell you that our West Virginia contractors did great. The bids came in under estimate, and uh, most of those projects went to West Virginia contractors. All right. Good deal. I'd like to tell you, like to make one, this is more of a statement than it is a question. Is, uh, I appreciate, first of all, your, we you put your faith in the good Lord above, first of all. Uh, second, appreciate the initiative that you've taken to put West Virginia back on the map. And uh, thirdly, uh, I appreciate you finally got on the right side again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're, we're, we're not, not going to debate that. that one now. But, uh, I do want to say, you know, this is like trying to, you can't, we can't develop West Virginia unless we have the infrastructure there for people to come. Because they're just not going to come. I mean, we're not going to have uh, business move in here if they don't have roads to get to or good roads. Uh, so I do appreciate it and uh, I am a big Trump supporter but you know I, I think this is what we've been needing for a long time in the White House and in the State House is folks that are business minded like you and President Trump that look out for you know how to bring in the income not how to spend it. Yeah. And I do appreciate it. Well,
Thank you. And let, let me say one more thing before any other question. Let me tell you the one thing we got to have, we got to do here. And there may be people who disagree with me, and if you do, you just do. We've got to make sure that education is the centerpiece of everything we have. It can be the driver to our economy in every way imaginable. We can't forget that because at the end of the day, really and truly, if you want to get people to your state, everybody wants to be have their kids educated in the very, very best possible spot. And it can be the economic driver beyond belief, but we can't continue to deal with education this way. Here's the way we deal with education in a lot of ways in my book. What we do is we deal with it as like a necessary evil that we've got to fund. You know, and we got to quit thinking about education that way. We need to be thinking about education as a real opportunity to us. Education here. She's oh. also the mother right. and our right. superintendent of Jackson County Schools. He was here, and uh, I'll put our schools up against any schools. Really, I know of, of your. I don't know what it's called, your auction or whatever you do to raise all kinds of monies that you've done in the past, it, which was a novel idea. I don't know who in the world came up with it 14,000 years ago and everything, but it was, it, you, you know, you, you do have one, one really impressive community. You really do. You always have, I mean, you have forever. Governor, yes, sir. Um, I don't know that too many people that's against the bond. I think that was in the details on the bond. First 48,000 jobs. If you, anybody thinks that all 48,000 jobs can be filled by West Virginians, it's not true. You can't do that. Um, but the uh, the remaining jobs, 80, the other 80 percent of those jobs, what's the guarantee that they're going to be coming from West Virginia people? I know there's a West Virginia Jobs Act in place. Will be enforced on those projects, and the contractors that have, that are going to bid these jobs are they going to be bidded to make sure that they are up to snuff on with the state of West Virginia, paying their, pay, their taxes um, in compliance with the Jobs Act, and also is there going to be a training aspect put into those projects to train the future of West Virginia, not only what we have right now? That's, that's a really good question and, and, and a great concern. I want to answer it first, and then I want Tom to chime in too. But just think about this just for a second. Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be a fabulous day in West Virginia's life if we awaken to a situation where we don't have enough West Virginians to fill all the jobs? Wouldn't that be something? That we wake up and there's too many jobs. Too many jobs and not enough people. You know, wouldn't that be fabulous? Now, the reality is this. Your governor, your president of the Senate, everybody I think in this room wants every job to be filled with the West Virginian. And we'll work as diligently as we possibly can to see that that is the case. On the other hand, you know, I think the question was, well, what if there's jobs that are filled with people that are out of state? You know, are we going to make sure that we can, that, that, that the contractors comply with our laws and everything else? And honest to goodness, with all in me, that's a, Affirmative beyond belief. Yes, 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 yes. Now, here's the other fallout of the whole thing that you've got you've to just take into consideration. As we grow, if there are people that come here and can see, and with, even if they come with that, with that employment, and they, they see just how great it is, there's a lot of people that are going to stay. There's a lot of people that are going to see just how great we really are. And they're going to want to stay here. And that's how we grow. You know, I said this the other, earlier place and everything, but just think about this just for a second. We not only want jobs, but we want good paying jobs, don't we? You know, now, think about this in the mining side. The mining side has kind of come back just a little bit right now. And hopefully, you know, we can sustain this or even grow from this. And my son's running our mining operations, and a year ago, people were making $16 an hour. Today, 
I mean, my son's got 200 jobs posted right now, and every one of them are $30 an hour and can't get to find the people. For crying out loud, that's good. You see, every one of those jobs that a person takes, that guy's going to make $100,000 a year running a bulldozer or driving a truck. $100,000 a year. You know, well, you think, is that, is that good or bad? It's fabulous in my book because people are at the Dairy Queen and they're buying pickup trucks and they're doing all the things that, that make us great. You know, now, can I tell you how many people, how many of those people are going to be from West Virginia? Well, of course I can't. But I can tell you that we want them all to be from West Virginia. We want to ramp up the tech schools and the community colleges and the training. And the last thing you asked was, is there a training component or something like that about this? These jobs are going to be bid labor intensive. And so what we're doing is we're basically putting more labor on the jobs than needed and basically creating an on-the-job training site for people. That's, that's the other component to this that, that we put in early on to be able to really help for just that. At the end of the day, sir, I want exactly what you want. I want West Virginians in these jobs like crazy and everything. And I absolutely don't want to be hoodooed by any contractor that's taking the money and taking the money out of our state and hurting us. I'm not going to let that happen, but anyway. The, the governor answered every part of your question except one part, which was what are we going to do about enforcing those things. The, the governor has charged his cabinet secretaries with working together, and I can say it's gratifying that I see us communicating more than I think has been done in many, many years. Woody Thrasher, the Secretary of Commerce, Dave Hardy, the Secretary of Taxation, and I had a group that met and is now charged with making sure as contracts are left that we're actually looking harder than ever. We're staffing up at highways with people who will actually be doing the enforcement of that. So yes, we intend to do it, and we intend to do it right. And as the governor said, if we have out-of-state contractors that aren't following the rules, then they won't get the jobs. Governor, I've got a question. As far as you know, we'll start building the, uh, the infrastructure. You're doing a great job of letting all the highway work and all that thing. Now, this, when will the small bridges come in? Was it next to the small, the, the rural bridges? The reason I'm asking is, you know, I live in the southern part of Wood County up there on uh, County Road 25 over 8, which is Buffalo Run. I'm crossing a bridge today that was built, it's still the old lattice type bridge, probably built in the 40s or 50s. I can't even get a fire truck legally up my holler. You know what I mean? If my house burns down, I don't tell the insurance company that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I know what they do. I do, I sure know what you're doing. Can go see or put your two cents worth in. Can you help me? Okay, okay. you absolutely. absolutely. They, they'll so, they'll solicit your comments, and, and I'll get I'll, I'll defer again and just say. Let me just say this. Let me. Let me this is kind of neat. In now, just think about this. In Wood, Pleasance, Jackson, Work, and Ritchie counties. Wood, Pleasance, Jackson, Work, and, and Ritchie counties. Five counties. There's 72 projects that are going to be let right away, $159.4 million, 3,188 new jobs. Now, tell them about the bridges and tell them about, about your, your feedback because he wants to hear from you about that bridge. That's the reason, you know, I like to just yeah, put no, no. more in because all that money is great, fantastic. But, but if it doesn't fix, fix your bridge, I got it. I got it. Let's so, I mean, sure. just ask a question. Sir, there are hundreds of bridges demonstrated on this map right here, hundreds of bridges. They're paid for different ways, and, and we stick them into different buckets based on what the nature of the bridges are. Up on I-70 and Wheeling, there's 20-some bridges and big interstate contracts, but there's little backcountry bridges. Back in your neck, I don't know about your bridge particularly, but back in your neck of the woods, there's plenty of bridges here. Uh, what we are doing is wanting to actively communicate with you, so if you see things on the list that you wonder about, please tell us. If you see things that aren't on the list that you think should be, please tell us. Now, 
What I will next do is point to Mr. Rusty Roden, our district engineer for this area, out of Parker. My retirement was just. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty is our senior senior district engineer and one of our best uh, engineers in the highway department. Rusty will be happy to talk to you about your specific bridge. And I'm sure that bridge I'm talking about. He's been there long enough. Okay, and let, 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 let me let, let me clarify, clarify one thing too. Look here, stand here. You, you see how big his arms are? That guy looks like a tough guy. <laughs> and the guy right beside him, I know is tough. Yeah. And so for God's sakes of living, you've got to talk to him about his bridge. <laughs> I think we got it, Governor. Okay. Thank you. Anybody <laughs> got anything, anything else? Listen, I, I really appreciate you coming. You know, by you coming... It's saying the same thing, the reason that I'm here. I mean, you can criticize me all day long, you know, if you choose to do so, but I don't need to be the governor. I don't need to be the governor for me in any way, shape, form, or fashion. You know, for crying out loud, if, if you own the Greenbrier Hotel, you're Elvis reincarnated, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and, and so you don't need the ego or the status, and I sure don't need the money. So why am I here? I'm here because the same reason you're here. I care. I love our state. You do too. You've got things to do right now, but you're here. You love our state and you want things to be better. Why are all these great people here? Same thing. Now let's go do something. Let's go do something together. Let's leave the Democrat and Republican and Independent thing to the side and be first and foremost West Virginians. I love you. God bless you.